Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 5th, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. It is a very busy astrological week, one of the busier that I've seen in a little while. And a lot of it is the carry forward energy, the building of energy of the recent new moon. So if you remember late last week, we had a supremely harmonious new moon taking place in the sign of Taurus. This was encouraging all of us to connect with the spirit of self value and self love in at least one area of life and to understand and recognize our worth, but also to enjoy ourselves, to allow ourselves to enjoy the earthly experience. Well, it is gonna be this week that the energy of the new moon is carried forward in a few key ways. So right in the middle of the week, the sun will speak in harmony with Neptune. And then at the end of the week, the sun will speak in supreme harmony with Saturn. Now, this is essentially the sun walking over where the moon was right around the time of the new moon, perfecting these uh, defining conversations of the essential characteristics of that new moon. And what this tells me is that we are now bringing greater light to where it is that we can tap into these tools that are around us, uh, these resources that are available to us. We are understanding how it is that we can move ourselves towards greater inspiration, greater belief, greater understanding, greater compassion, which is the Neptunian energy, but also keeping an eye to the big picture and understanding what it is that is worth manifesting in our perception, which is Saturn, that we're able to truly bring forward the energy that much more. But it isn't just about the sun. Right around Monday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, Mercury will also move into the sign of Taurus and two days later, we'll connect with Uranus in the sky. This is such important energy. So Mercury is what we are talking about as a collective. Uh, it's also what we're thinking about in our own individual journeys as well. Given that this is the part of the sky where the recent new moon was, it does suggest that we are gonna now start talking about it and bringing forward that energy, thinking about how it is that we can create uh, the sense of new beginnings that feels important, feels transformative, feels inspired as promised by the new moon. But the great thing is with that connection to Uranus, it's like we're taking a leap forward. We are stepping into our future more boldly and uh, surprise opportunities may very well be part of this. Remember, uh, when we talk about Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus, uh, there are a few very big changes that astrologers have been talking about uh, that we are likely to see unfold. And so one of the things that comes to mind, of course, is how we do banking, is how we understand money. That is gonna be one of the larger themes. And I spoke about this at length in the Uranus special horoscope, of course, that you can see on my YouTube channel. But at least for now, uh, with Mercury meeting Uranus in the sky, it's as if as a collective, we start talking about these very issues. And very likely there is gonna be some important news that we see on the world stage, or perhaps uh, some launch as well that we may see that gives people the opportunity or the option to do banking differently than they did before in a little bit more of a what's defined as a cutting edge way uh, than before or a more high tech way, which is part of what Uranus helps us do. It helps us to incorporate new technologies into the ways in which we've done things and also to redefine uh, what has been there before. And so this is gonna be part of, yes, we'll notice this in the media, in the collective conversation. Um, I think that this is also going uh, to be a time when uh, more of us are having conversations as to how it is that we can create practical change in our lives quickly. Now, I know it has been said, and I think that this is gonna be part of the equation when you consider late in the week, the sun speaking in supreme harmony with Saturn. And even when you consider the connection with Neptune as well, you know, there's this uh, famous saying that says, there is no magic pill 
there is a magic process. Now, sometimes that process can take time. It unveils itself slowly. And that's what the sun moving through Taurus, uh, speaking with Neptune, speaking with Saturn, uh, that's what this is reminding us, to trust the process and to trust that it will lead us to magic. However, with Uranus, Uranus likes to do things quickly. It wants change. Uh, it wants to feel the energy immediately. And it wants radical transformation. In fact, revolutionary change uh, in an instant. And this is going to be part of what I think as a collective we're going to be talking about as well. Practical ways to create changes in our income, for example. And I know that it can be a little bit of a pie in the sky uh, type of dream. But at least as a collective, we'll be talking more about these things. And we'll also be talking about how it is that we actually uh, do business, how it is that we actually understand profits, what is it that is profitable, and why is that, uh, and where is it that technology comes into the picture. So these are gonna be part of what we're talking about, and yet I do think that there's going to be a larger grounded perspective that reminds us to trust a process instead of looking for that magic pill. Now also this week, as we start the week, Mars is gonna be active in the sky as well, standing across the sky from Jupiter. Now Mars right now is moving through the sign of Gemini just for a little while longer. It's gonna be in the middle of the month that Mars will change signs. And so Mars will move through the sign of Gemini once every two years or so. Standing across Jupiter in the sign of Sagittarius, well, this particular connection even though just these planets will stand across each other every two years or so, uh, for them to happen in these respective signs uh, makes it that much more rare and that much more special. And it tends to be a time when uh, we are considering our own power, we are considering a more optimistic future and what we really want, and what it is that we are willing to summon our own courage for, what it is that we are willing to fight for. Now, because it is Jupiter in Sagittarius, there's this sense of, of belief and philosophy uh, and the sense of understanding where it is that our beliefs serve us in the direction that we desire to go. But at the same time, because it is Mars in the sign of Gemini, we're also considering how it is that our thoughts support the direction that we feel is more inspired for our life. But of course, as a collective, there are a few ways in which this can uh, play out as well. This looks like a lot of rhetoric. I'm so sorry to say that, but we may notice some of that uh, sort of kicking up on the world stage where people are talking very uh, forcefully at each other. Um, uh, the good thing is, is that ultimately this energy will pass. Uh, and for that, we can be grateful and we can look forward to. Uh, and also, of course, because we can't always uh, control what is happening on the world stage but we can affect it based on focusing in on our own lives and how it is that we bring greater peace in our own lives within ourselves within our uh, communities within our families and that in turn actually I think is uh, the biggest part of what ultimately plays out in a larger sense and so where it is that you choose to elevate this energy I do believe in my humble perception that we actually end up helping the collective. And so wherever it is in your own life that uh, instead of using this energy uh, to get into a place of thinking that one person knows better, uh, one person is right, the other is not, uh, getting to, into an energy of, of sort of a self-righteousness, if we can avoid that temptation, because it's kind of a high in and of itself, which is part of this energy, we sort of get an adrenaline high, we get a bit of a rush, uh, when we allow ourselves to get into that dynamic. However, where it is that we are instead willing to uh, consider how to uh, determinedly and with effort decide that we are gonna direct our thoughts uh, towards the type of world that we truly desire and where it is that we are going to direct our communication so that it affirms an inherent sense of unity and interconnection between all of us, I think the more that it is that we're gonna use this energy for its higher end of its manifestation. And that is part of our choice. And that really, it is in these choices that we co-create the world together. 
Venus is also active this week as well. And this is going to be a bit of a welcome relief. If you think about how um, Venus has been hanging out in the sign of Aries for over two weeks now, but not really connecting with other power players. And in this way, the energy has been a little separate, has been a little isolated. And that can be nice, right? To have this one part of life that feels uh, like there's a greater level of contentment, a greater level of ease. However, there's not a lot of action that happens when that planet isn't connecting to other power players. Well, this week, Venus will make up for that big time, okay? Venus is gonna be speaking with three big power players in the sky. It is gonna be in the first part of the week that Venus will speak with Saturn. Midweek, speaking in supreme harmony with Jupiter before moving on to speak with Pluto. Now that supremely harmonious connection in the middle of the week, I think that that is a great blessing. All of us in at least one area of life are going to feel like life is very much on our side, that there is an abundance of blessings or wherever it is that you want to experience more, whether it is uh, indulgence, whether it is joy, whether it is pleasure, whether it is love, it feels like there are multiple options, but also there's that possibility there of overdoing things as well. Now that isn't always bad, right? If we're overdoing it in an area that we really uh, want to be diving into, but yes, chances are uh, very likely that there are going to be more than a few people out there who are going to experience things like love at first sight. <laughs> uh, now that could be love for a person, that could be love for a purchase. Uh, there are so many ways in which you could use this energy. Love can be found in so many ways. Now, yes, we think about love in terms of our human connections or our uh, connections with other beings on this planet. That is a type of love, a very powerful type of love. But I do think that when we're looking at this energy, two fire signs, uh, Jupiter and Venus, uh, that love can be experienced in all kinds of ways. The love for music, love for art, love for um, the way in which you feel in a particular environment. And of course, yes, love for things as well. This is also an energy of creative genius. Uh, and so yes, it is very much about trusting inspiration. Uh, if you find yourself waking up with an incredible idea, make sure you're doing what you need to do to document that because uh, there are going to be these extensive creative energies that are floating around or within us, however you wanna understand it, uh, that have that potential there to reap even more abundance for us. Sometimes quickly, sometimes in the fullness of time. However, what I think could actually work well is the fact that Venus will be uh, sandwiching this supremely harmonious connection on the one side with Saturn, on the other side with Pluto. These are conversations of tension and they encourage us to take action. Um, it's about feeling like something is not as good as it can be. And so we are determined to own our power and to do something to move ourselves in a positive direction. And as a result of the consistent action we take throughout this week, we will be able to maximize those rewards that much more. And so the connection with Saturn in the first part of the week, uh, on one level, just looking at that conversation in and of itself, that is a bit of a reality check. Now that could show up in terms of love, in terms of money, uh, in terms of what we have been indulging in, whether it's emotion or otherwise, and being more honest with ourselves as to what the true reasons are, the true causes are, what the real outcome is, especially to our long-term future. Now that connection to Pluto that happens late in the week, um, that can be one of a very strong faded feeling. So feeling pulled in a particular direction. Uh, yes, that could be an attraction, a very strong attraction that has uh, an element there that is uh, complicated or less than ideal. Uh, and yet the desire is there, yet the pull is there. But this can also be a sense of um, heartstrings being pulled 
the love or the uh, the goodwill that you have with another person in some way being manipulated and I'm so sorry to say that but that is one way that this energy can work out and so it is important to stay as mindful as possible and of course with all of these energies it's always up to you to decide what's right for you to do in light of your unique circumstances but I would say, given the overall picture, as much as there is that brief moment of indulgence in the middle of the week, and yes, reward that could come in the middle of the week as well, I think that this is the kind of week where um, if it is that you are wanting you know, to make some very Venusian changes, right? That has to do with things like hair color, uh, new clothes, new wardrobe, tattoos, uh, cosmetic procedures. Uh, with a week like this, it does suggest it would be a good idea to hold back on that. Already Venus uh, being in the sign of Aries is, is not very strong in that sign. So if you remember, and I know I've spoken about this uh, to you in recent weeks, but while Venus was moving through the sign of Pisces, like she's very strong in the sign of Pisces. She likes being there. Uh, it's what astrologers call exalted. But right now she's in the sign of Aries and the sign of Aries is ruled by Mars. Uh, and so this is sort of my astrology uh, tech way, <laughs> my nerd hat way of saying that when Venus is moving through the sign of Aries, she's already not as strong and in her full power as she could be as much as she is in other signs. Very soon, uh, next week, she's gonna be moving into her home sign of Taurus. That is a wonderful placement for Venus to be in. So there's a lot to look forward to. If it is that you're hoping to make changes uh, where it comes to the, the Venusian elements of life that I mentioned, if you can postpone a little bit, it'll probably be a good idea, especially after this week. Because once we get you into Venus, into Taurus, uh, that sets up a really nice four week cycle uh, where any changes or anything that you do to actually tap into that Venusian energy of pleasure, of joy, of love, uh, of enjoying the earthly incarnation uh, has that much more of a boost behind it. Maybe not right away, and I'll talk about this more in the horoscope for next week, but it is gonna be next week that Venus, as she enters Taurus, is gonna connect with Uranus. That can have things going all kinds of ways. But beyond that, <laughs> we've got really beautiful energy. But of course, as I said, it's always up to you to decide what's right for you in light of your unique circumstances. And considering how this energy can be used in ways that are so joyous, uh, so filled with possibility, uh, so filled with just being reminded that our journey through life is not necessarily meant to be uh, a trudge and a toil at all times, but that we can allow ourselves to be present and to uh, fully enjoy our own feelings, our own sensations, and our own rise of emotion as well. Well, it tells me that there's a lot of reason here uh, to look forward to a truly enjoyable week as long as we balance that with our responsibility and with where it is that we are hoping for meaningful change to occur. What I love about this week for us, well, I am going to choose, I know like sort of the default and what you would expect for me to say probably is Venus trine Jupiter. That is a really fortunate energy uh, that we can tap into to uh, manifest so much for ourselves, prosperity, joy, love, whatever we want. And yes, that's a beautiful energy indeed. However, I am going to choose for this week Mercury meeting Uranus. And why is that? Because I personally believe that there are not nearly enough surprises in life. And it is the surprises that ultimately uh, help us to engage with life that much more fully. But there's another layer to this as well. There's a lot of excitement. We're sort of at the very beginning of this extended Mars moving through the sign of Taurus uh, cycle. And so any time a planet moves into the sign of Taurus and meets Uranus in the sky, we're gonna start picking up clues and insights into where this energy might take us. And so this is, a, in a sense, a, a glimpse into the future, a deeper understanding of ultimately uh, where it is that our own personal revolution may be. And so make sure you're paying attention to your own thoughts, 
uh, to the conversations you're having with others, uh, to the synchronistic moments you just find yourself in that you fall into, because it is in these very moments that not only will we find a, a glimpse into the mystery as to how the coming seven years could unfold for us, but we will also find our sacred freedom. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Uh, I'm so excited to read you guys. Let me know in the comments below. How did last week go as well? Uh, and to the people watching on the premiere, I made sure to be here for the premiere this week. Thank you to everybody who's joining me live or joining me on the replay. I appreciate each and every one of you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And for a very limited time only, I am re-offering this beautiful pendant. Uh, the universe is wise and loving. The pendant right here. It is sterling silver, 925 silver, uh, and 10 karat gold plated. I hope you absolutely love it, uh, that you cherish it. It's available for a very limited time because I only am able to offer these when I am in Canada. Uh, and I'm headed to Canada, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But yes, I'm headed back to Canada. And so I tend to mail these out when I'm in Canada. And so if you would like one, uh, available only until mid-May, uh, please do log on to my website, NadiaShaw.com, and you can place your order. Uh, the next time I'm gonna be in Canada after May is gonna be sort of late August uh, before I'm heading to Baltimore, so towards the end of August. So it will not be on sale again until we get there. And so yes, it would be absolutely lovely uh, to share this with you wherever it is that you share it on your altar, uh, whether you wear it, whether you keep it in your wallet uh, as a little totem. Uh, I hope that it affirms the sacred truth for you. The universe is wise and loving. Now, speaking of Canada, I'm really excited. I'm gonna be on a plane in a couple of days uh, and I'm headed to Vancouver, a very special city for me. And I will be speaking with the Fraser Valley Astrology Guild this coming Thursday. Can you believe it? The next uh, weekly YouTube video I do, I will be doing from Vancouver. So that's gonna be fun as well. But yes, I will be in Vancouver, Fraser Valley Astrology Guild. Uh, Thursday night, I will be speaking on luck and fortune in the astrology chart. And then on Saturday, there is a half day workshop, life purpose in the astrology chart. Really looking forward to meeting friends and fans and students uh, and superstars. I think that uh, the learning that happens in real time as we are together sharing the energy, uh, growing and magnifying our learning together uh, is very sacred. It really is a sacred space to learn together and I hope that every single participant experiences that with me. So again, link in the description below uh, and I will be in Vancouver this week. And later this month, Memorial Day weekend, I will be speaking in Seattle, Washington at the NORWAC conference. Uh, I think that's also going to be a whole lot of fun as well. And so I look forward to meeting you there. I'll be uh, doing two talks. Uh, along with world-renowned teachers. I think I don't think that there's any space left uh, for the conference. I think that there is a waiting list, but you can contact the conference directly and they will let you know. And yes, if you end up on the waiting list, uh, that's okay too. If it is meant to be, I am sure, and I truly do believe that those who are uh, karmically aligned uh, will find their way to each other, especially where it comes to something like a learning environment, which I personally do consider a sacred space. And Labor Day weekend, I will be in Baltimore at the NCGR conference, again, with some of the most brilliant minds in astrology alive today, gathering, uh, teaching lessons, and just being able to connect with other astrologers. It really is a very uh, fulfilling experience, fulfilling moment. And so I hope that you will join me there as well. Again, links in the description below. I look forward to being back in Baltimore this year. And of course, finally, in 2020, I will be part of a once in a lifetime, truly rare event, a cruise event uh, alongside uh, some truly renowned astrologers. 
and the intention of this event uh, is to understand and to help facilitate uh, transformation, if you will, uh, and to understand that we are now living in times uh, that can be pretty intense for people as we are going through this, uh, this process of understanding what stays and what goes. Yes, as a collective, but certainly in our own journeys as well. And that's why this cruise event is called Love, Joy, Hope and Transformation. And it is uh, designed to get you out of your comfort zone, uh, put you in the middle of the ocean uh, along with others, again, who are karmically aligned to be part of this experience. Uh, and to be together, to uh, participate in ritual and meditation and Reiki and astrology together and to share this sacred experience. So yes, I'm gonna be teaching, but also I am a participant as well. Uh, there are gonna be stops made, and that's also really exciting for a Sag Moon like me. Uh, we are gonna be stopping uh, in Mexico, in Honduras, and in Belize. So along the way uh, of learning and being on the ship we're also going to dock and uh, we will be visiting at least one if not more sacred sites and so if this is something that feels like it resonates with you then uh, check out the description below click on the link to learn more uh, once you sign up uh, you will be automatically sent an email or shortly after sent an email within 24 hours that uh, says to you welcome and if it is that you need any help at all if you need a roommate to reduce costs uh, we are there to help facilitate that and connect you with the right people who's organizing all the roommate situation um, and also I would encourage you if it's something that feels like it's resonating for you especially under the energy and the light of this very powerful new moon that we just had I would encourage you to sign up as soon as possible because um, the cabin prices do go up as they are sold in particular blocks and so I don't have any control over that nobody uh, with the actual event on the cruise has control over that that's with the travel agency that's organizing uh, the cabin spaces but I know that uh, there's already been a little bit of a bump in pricing and so where possible and if price is an issue for you, cost is an issue for you, um, and if it is resonating as the right move for you, Mercury isn't retrograde anymore, Mercury is doing brilliant things this week, um, and if you are called to be karmically aligned with this moment, then uh, I'm sure that you will be, and I'm sure that I will uh, meet you there to share the sacred experience with you. And thank you. Thank you so much to everybody who's here. Uh, thank you to my friends and my fans and my superstars. Earlier today, we had an amazing hangout, an amazing meditation together uh, that I do for superstars at every new moon. And that was a lot of fun. So thank you, superstars, for joining me. And thank you, friends and fans, for joining me right now for this premiere and on the replay. Uh, and to be some small part of your sacred journey is such a privilege. And it really does mean so much to me, so thank you. My mission and really the, the thing that I tend to think about, like how can I affirm love and wisdom in the world? How can I remind people of love and wisdom? That is my motivation. And so if you've been with me for a while, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I try all kinds of things, like new things, new offerings, uh, classes, jewelry, <laughs> um, all kinds of things, right? Videos. It is all, the foundation of it is always to affirm love and wisdom in the world. And you being here allows me to do just that, uh, allows me to live what I believe is my purpose. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Well, thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.